John Carpenter isn't at the forefront of as many movie conversations these days as compared to the past. But that's due in part to the filmmaker not creating a new movie in the last decade. Regardless, the impact of his filmmaking is undeniable. With his scores and effects, it's amazing the atmospheric worlds that he created, and often in movies clocking in around only 90 minutes long. His contributions to cinema will stand the test of time with the other all-time greats. He'll just be rebelliously standing on the outskirts. I'm Chris Giddens, this is Movie Scene, and here are the movies of John Carpenter, ranked in order of my preference for them. Number 23, The Ward. Other filmmakers have been there and done this much better. Some argue that this was a bad movie saved by the ending, while others say the ending ruined a potentially intriguing story. Regardless, The Ward has an identity problem. Number 22, Vampires. I'm not sure if there's any other movie with more instances of almost being awesome, but instead just being meh. Despite containing all the elements of something I'd like, Vampires is ultimately a perpetual swing and miss. Number 21, Masters of Horror Pro-Life. The acting alternates between awful and great, and there are some glaring editing continuity issues, but if you get past that, this Masters of Horror entry isn't bad, until the corny ending. But it does pose a worthy philosophical question, albeit in an intentionally extreme way. Number 20, Ghosts of Mars. Ghosts of Mars is not a superb film, but I think it's underrated and gets a bad rap, possibly due to being released just a year after the superior Pitch Black. I think it would have met with much more success if released in the mid-90s, and the Mad Max Martian demons are awesome. Number 19, Village of the Damned. I liked it, but I also haven't seen the original, which is widely accepted to be far superior. Regardless, this version doesn't quite live up to the excellent premise. Besides a few super performances, it lacks spirit. Number 18, Escape from L.A. There's so much I love about this sequel. The cast, especially Steve Buscemi and Bruce Campbell. It's got an awesome rockin' soundtrack. But there's also so much I hate. The basketball and surfing scenes. But my main gripe is how Snake escapes death. In the original, these escapes were improbable, but they work. Here, they're just silly. Number 17, Christine. As a kid, I loved this superficially for the car, Christine. But I hated Arnie, portrayed by Keith Gordon. I rewatched it a few years ago. The car's actions are still good, but this time I appreciated Gordon's transformative performance because I still hated Arnie. Number 16, Body Bags. I love the gas station overarch, especially the first two thirds. I would have liked seeing more and more horror cameos and then finding them all dead, killed by a Toby Hooper or even Carpenter himself. Additionally, Stacy Keach is awesome in Carpenter's hair story. The moment he looks at his throat made my jaw drop and clench up all at once, and the film never relents from that moment to the end. Number 15, Someone's Watching Me. A lesser known Carpenter because it was a made-for-TV movie that wasn't available on home media until recently. But don't mistake it as a lesser film, even though it was constrained by the network limits. Carpenter was still able to create a tense thriller that builds dread, and it's worth watching. Number 14, Dark Star. This is basically a student film by Carpenter and Dan O'Bannon, which was so awesome that they expanded it for theatrical release. It's so bizarre. I recommend you check it out if you haven't seen it, especially if you're in the mood for a trippy space odyssey. Number 13, Starman. I love the dude, Jeff Bridges, and he deserved the Academy Award nomination that he earned for this role. But Karen Allen is the true shining star in my opinion. My eyes are constantly drawn to her. One downside is that Carpenter didn't score this film, which was a first for his movies. Number 12, Memoirs of an Invisible Man. I don't get why this bombed and was critically panned. The special effects are freaking incredible, especially for the time. Perhaps the tone threw off people who expected more of a comedy. It reminds me of, and is as good as, the standard MCU origin story flick. Number 11, Masters of Horror, Cigarette Burns. 
Despite its flaws, this is Carpenter's best work of the last 20 years. I think it would have been even better if fleshed out into a standard length feature with more Jacob's Ladderish mind trips. Also, Norman Reedus fans will want to check out his work here prior to Walking Dead. Number 10. The Fog. One word. Atmosphere. It's cliche to say it, but for good reason here. It's right there in the title. The movie develops like the best campfire ghost story, slowly building tension to a satisfying end. And Carpenter's score is perfect. Number 9. Elvis. I had no idea that this movie existed until I was making my list. And thinking I'd seen all of Carpenter's movies, I checked his filmography. I was shocked to see this made-for-TV biopic released only one year after Halloween. Kurt Russell is perfect as Elvis, and this movie launched the run of Carpenter flicks starring Russell. Number 8. Prince of Darkness The opening credits last 10 minutes, but that's not a bad thing. Carpenter's score plays non-stop throughout the entire movie, and that also somehow works. Add in some surreal scenes and intentionally campy characters, and you get a fun yet unsettling B-plus movie. Number 7. Escape from New York It's amazing what Carpenter was able to accomplish here on such a relatively small budget. It's dark and gritty, perfectly suited to match the dystopian Manhattan, which is a character by itself. Speaking of which, there are so many colorful characters, and played by a star-studded cast. Number 6. In the Mouth of Madness This is perhaps Carpenter's most underrated work. There's little to nothing completely new here, but that's by design. Those who have issues with some of the plot are missing out in my opinion, and the guy on the bike is one of the creepiest figures in movie history. Number 5. Big Trouble in Little China This movie is relentless. It never takes a break to let you reflect on the escalating craziness. There's a lot of corny dialogue, but most if not all of it is intentional and all part of the fun. Just strap in and enjoy the trip. Number 4. They Live I'm so glad my dad showed me They Live when I was a kid. I was a huge pro wrestling fan, so all he had to say was Rowdy Roddy Piper and I was sold. But then it ended up having so many elements that I increasingly loved as a teenager and young adult on repeat viewings. And that brawl in the alley is just undeniable. Number 3. Assault on Precinct 13 Individually, I love the acting, music, cinematography, and action. Together, because each are so understated and gritty, especially by today's standards, they create an effect in which the killings during the first half seem horrifically real. It's brutal and masterfully crafted. Number 2. The Thing This is arguably Carpenter's best work. So many movies today try to achieve the understated, paranoia-inducing atmosphere, but most of those who do succeed in this regard then fail to deliver the horrific goods. Thanks to some insane practical effects, the thing does not disappoint when it's time for an appropriately gross money shot. Number 1. Halloween Premiering a couple months after I was born, Halloween was my first favorite scary movie, and I've seen it more times than any other horror film. It's a must-watch each October to really set off the Halloween holiday season. It's dry, fallen leaves, natural or man-made, rustling in the breeze or muffling approaching footsteps. It's the lengthening shadows of shortened days masking the faceless inevitability lurking in the dark for all of us. It's not just my favorite John Carpenter movie. It's, in my opinion, his best. All right, that's it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. What are your top three John Carpenter movies? And until next time, thanks for watching.